Imagine getting up every day full of energy as if you were in your 20s again. What would that be like? What would it be worth to you? What is your health worth to you? Think about it. Your health isn't everything, but without it, everything else is nothing. And yet, too many of us are taking it for granted until something goes wrong. And no one wakes up hoping to be diagnosed with a disease or chronic illness. And yet, we've never been taught how to be proactive in our health through our school or public health. As a registered health coach and integrative health practitioner, I believe it's time this information is made available to everyone. Combining new knowledge around your health and the ability to do my functional medicine lab tests in the comfort of your own home will allow you to optimize your health for today and all your tomorrows. Don't wait for your wake up call. Welcome back everyone. Melissa Dealey here of the Don't Wait for Your Wake Up Call podcast. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. And once again, I have a fabulous guest to share with you this time all the way from down under my home country, Kathy Ashton. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Melissa. Lovely to be here. So excited to share you with uh, my audience today. So Kathy is the founder of Flourish, and she is a degree qualified medicinal nutritionist. It's her extensive knowledge, practical experience, and immense passion for helping others that made Flourish what it is today. It was significant family health issues, her own journey with fibromyalgia and her husband being diagnosed with MS that initially prompted her journey deep into the world of nutritional study and research. Her whole foods alchemy has now culminated in a range of raw plant-based supplements, causing uh, supplements and using her unique KIT healing program empowers people to naturally achieve their health goals. So I'm excited to dive into your story today, Kathy, and I want to learn more about your unique or, or KIT healing program. But let's start with your story. Obviously, oh my you were looking for answers. I was obviously looking for answers. So um, we, uh, where does our story start? It's so, it, it's like everybody's story, right? It starts off just in a tiny little point and then it seems to go down and down and down and sort of down a, a, a dark funnel. Uh, so that's how we kind of felt. We so it started off, I suppose, in 2003, when my husband, Chris, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And we went very much down the Western medicine model. So we went to see all of the um, neurologists and all the doctors and to try and find out uh, what we could do to support him. And we, we knew we, we come from a very medical family. So, you know, we knew that this is what you had to do. Back then, there wasn't a lot that they could offer people with MS and it wasn't known, nowhere near to the degree that it's been studied since. So we were pretty much told to go away and ignore it and, you know, not to live in a two-storey house because he's going to end up in a wheelchair and all of these sorts of things. And maybe there were some drugs that he could, um, he could take. And over time and distance, we ended up taking those drugs. But what was happening with that is that Chris was becoming more and more depressed um, and he didn't like them. And he, he's such a disciplined person, so he wasn't taking them. So I was looking at him going, what's going on? Why are you doing this? And, you know, this type A personality that's so incredibly um, disciplined and everything that he did was forgetting to take these injections that he needed to do three times a week. So it was kind of like, well, what is it? What is it? What's going on with you? And I could see his mood really beginning to, um, to decline. So he said to me, well, listen, back in your early 30s, so back in my early 30s, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I had a disease called parvovirus, and which is an arthritic, I'd picked it up, a virus, uh, an arthritic virus. And um, it left me, the aftermath of that was the fact that I ended up with fibromyalgia. So I went to see a rheumatologist and they said, listen, this, we don't know much about this either. So what we recommend is that you get on these drugs and you sleep better and you try, these drugs will help you with your pain. And the drugs just started getting bit bigger and bigger because they didn't help with anything. Right. And so I, then I they think getting... it's because the dose is too low. So they give you more as opposed, they don't think that it's not working because it's not the right 
response to your condition right yeah correct correct absolutely and she, they had nothing else to offer other than because fibromyalgia is all wrapped up in pain and joint pain and muscle pain and um and i was in my early 30s so at the time i and i had three little babies i was running around after and i had a girlfriend my best girlfriend decided that we would she and i you know as girlfriends do um that we would take up uh, marathon running and triathlons <laughs> and all of these sorts of things so here i am with fibromyalgia trying to exercise like it was going out of fashion and doing all this <laughs> training and she would pull up really well we're training for this triathlon and she'd pull up really really well and i wouldn't i'd have all these aches and pains and going oh my goodness but to, i've got to do it again today and the pain was getting worse so the doctors just kept giving me more medications to try and combat that and right. they were also saying you know exercise was good keep doing blah 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 so I was doing all of that. Mm -hmm. And then because the pain kept going up and because we were, you know, doing all this crazy amount of training, I, she's, um, I went back to see the end uh, to see my rheumatologist. And I said, do you think my diet has anything, you know, it plays any role in this because I was super thin, um, super fit, but I, my energy, I was getting from lollies, from, you know, from candy. Right. And I had candy or lollies or what we would call <laughs> sweet or sweets hidden all around the house. So because <laughs> I didn't have time to kind of eat properly, yeah. even though I ate properly at night, but during the day, if I was a bit depleted, I had this amazing sugar craving. So I would crave all these sugars. Right. And I would secretly eat all of those to give me a bit more energy. <laughs> So she turned to me and she said to me, um, there is no scientific, I'll never forget this, no scientific evidence to prove that food has any, plays any role in your disease or in any disease. And, and I was like, this? how far back are we? You said you were in your thirties. So early 2000s. So how long ago was that? That was 30 years ago. <laughs> so a long, long time, right? So nineties. Yeah. 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 Oh. In, my, in the 90s, 30, yeah. 30 years ago. So, I mean, today, I, I'm sure she wouldn't say that same thing, I hope, because there is so much evidence. But exactly. when I walked away from that meeting, she gave me then a, um, a script for methotrexate. And um, I thought, oh, I don't know. And this was a, what they called a mini chemotherapy. And I thought, oh, I don't think this is going to be good. So I then set about to go and to go back to sort of, I had to go to libraries. There was no such thing as the internet back then. Yeah. It's, bit, <laughs> you know, it's hard to imagine that we've lived without it, but yes. um, I went to libraries and I did a lot of study to find out about methotrexate and to find out about fibromyalgia. And then I had this, read this article that maybe food did have, there was something that you could do. So I threw out all the sugar, went cold turkey on the sugar, didn't do that. And within, I say around about a week, but I think it was probably more 10 days to two weeks. One night, it was about four o'clock in the morning, I got up out of bed and went to the bathroom. And that used to cause me so much pain in my feet and my joints that I found myself sitting on the, the toilet going, how did I just get here? And there was this huge aha moment that I was no longer in pain. Yeah. And it was huge, like, oh, my goodness, because I've given up the sugar. And, I'm, and so I didn't take the drugs. I've never taken the drugs. And I didn't have it. So because of that and waking Chris up going, I'm not in pain, and look at me, and being able to run and do everything, and because I'd controlled my diet from then on, and, and then I started getting very interested in it. So then when Chris was diagnosed, he said to me, there has MS, there has to be a dietary side to this as well. So why don't you, why don't you go back to university and study it? <laughs> he didn't want to go back. You wanted to go back. <laughs> yeah, why didn't I want to go back and study it? Considering the fact that I had three little children at home and he had, you know, he had a very high powered full-time job. So, you know, right. running this house and but yes, I'm sure you have time to go back to do a degree <laughs> in nutritional medicine. <laughs> no worries, I says I. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> great idea. 
So I did go and do that. And, um, and I am so incredibly grateful that I have because it's changed our life. And every research paper I did was usually around for either fibromyalgia or MS. So everything, my, although my thesis wasn't, but anyway. Mm. Um, so it was all just learning about using food as medicine or food alongside medicine or yeah. food alongside supplements. What can we do here to absolutely bring out the very best in our bodies mm -hmm. and allow them to heal the way that they need to heal without using drugs as the first line of defense. Right. Because the body yeah. knows how to heal. It's designed to heal when we create the environment for it to heal. It's just yeah. sometimes modern life has us so far out of balance that the body's too depleted to heal on its own. And that's where we need to support it with better nutrition and supplements, et cetera, to allow it to come back into that place where it can heal. Yeah. And when you do that, when you bring it back into, you allow it, like you give it exactly right, the, the right environment so it can thrive or so it can flourish, it will do what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. Then occasionally mm -hmm. you might need, you might be left over with something yucky and then you have to go to Western medicine and there is no choice that so you have to right. potentially do something else. Yes. That happened. I had a patient. I love this story. I had a patient who was full of fibromyalgia. She had aches and pains from head to toe. And she came along and she did my program. So the kit healing program. So mm -hmm. uh, what you were talking about, the KIT yeah. program. Yeah. She did that. And at the end of it, we had this one pain that she could not get rid of. And it was a pain in her, um, in her shoulder. Mm -hmm. And we tried everything. We tried maybe, maybe it was a reaction to a certain food. May, so we took that particular food out and then we put others in and then we increased all the foods and we increased her supplements. Maybe she needed a few more of this and that and the other. So we went through that for about 10 weeks and at the end, I said to her, you know what? I'm completely stumped. I do not know what we can do about this shoulder pain. And when she went back to the doctors, I said, how about we get an MRI of it? And she had a torn rotator cuff. Yeah, see, see? <laughs> there's always an answer, right? <laughs> you just so have to keep looking until you find the answer. Yes. So once we knew that we'd taken all the food, we, yes. we, her diet was not playing a role in this right. pain. Right. We cleaned up her diet. It was right. perfect. Right. We, she was anti-inflammatory in every possible way. We were supplementing her in, in yeah. the way to, to support her body the way she needed to. Mm -hmm. But then we had this one little dicky pain that we couldn't mm -hmm. get rid of. And then, so no amount of food is going to fix a rotator cuff injury, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. So she needed then to go in and have... Uh, I think she ended up with a small operation to fix right. this tear and everything. And she's fine. Right. And what's really interesting about that, well, a couple of things that I love how when we do create that environment for the human body to heal, that it responds so quickly. Oh, so so quickly. like in your case, when you stop sugar, it was 10 days to two weeks at the outside, right? Before you had that experience of no pain going to the bathroom. And that's beautiful because it, it lets you know you're on the right track and mm. it motivates you to keep doing what you're doing, right? Yeah. So our body talks to us with symptoms, asking us to do something differently. Very right. often we ignore them thinking it's aging or allergies or genetics and that we can't do anything about it, but we actually can. And when we take action, then the body heals so quickly, letting us know again talking to us again that yes thank you you're on the right path now right and then with the rotator cuff what's interesting about that is you said she had pain from head to toe so she didn't know one pain from another pain she just had pain everywhere right and so all the work you were doing was eliminating all that pain that was related to the fibromyalgia and she had no idea she had a rotator cuff issue because she was just in so much pain everywhere she didn't know that was any different to anywhere else whereas if that was her only pain she yes, might have exactly. figured that out sooner right yes exactly and the interesting thing with her is is that she had been to every specialist that you possibly can imagine every right. doctor right. and they kept on saying to her it's your fibromyalgia it's playing up so let's now put you on endone or let's now put right. you on methotrexate or let's 
put you on all right. of, you know tramadol and she's on right. this massive cocktail of drugs lyrica right. and all of these things right which in itself plays an in, is enormous, an enormous toxins. <laughs> yes, yes in, that's right increasing the pain and it's you go down this vortex yeah so you know of needing more and more different drugs but at the same time you're destroying the gut microbiome and Absolutely. they're not flourishing so therefore they're not keeping you healthy and they're not teaching your immune system properly and so on and so forth so it's not until you take it all away and go hey let's go back to basics mm -hmm. let's just look at your diet and work from the beginning and re-establish everything, re-establish your gut microbiome, re-establish everything that's going on that your body then, as you rightly say, goes, oh, thank goodness you're listening to me. Now I can <laughs> thrive, you know? Yes. <sighs> yes. Now we have a favorite saying that regular listeners will know, and that is listen when your body whispers so it doesn't have to yell at you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because it will end up shouting at you, right? Exactly. In and that's when you can't tell one pain from another and you're going to the doctors, but because you're talking to them about this, all this pain, you haven't isolated one type of issue from another, right? Because you can't tell. Yeah. So I do want to hear your husband's story and how food helped him, but is this a good time to explain your kit healing program or do you want to come to that later? No, um, yeah, well, I, I'm happy to discuss it whenever you want. So KIT stands for, so our program is based all around food and using mm -hmm. food as um, as a healing as a healing modality. And it either goes alongside medicine if medicine is totally necessary or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, depends. But it basically stands for K for knowledge, I for implementation and T for transformation. So that's where the KIT came from. And the case for knowledge, my big understanding is, is that the more you understand about the way in which the human body works, about biochemistry, about all the pathways that are involved in your particular issue, mm -hmm. then you've got knowledge and empowerment to be able to go, hey, I can take control of this and responsibility for it myself. Yes. yes. And being responsible for what you put in your mouth and therefore being able to change and I think the more knowledge you have going hey if I eat this this will be the symptom this will be the pro I know that myself come summertime I learned this the hard way my children were saying to me mum uh, I used to make back in back in the good old days so back in 30 years ago I used mm -hmm. to be known for my Christmas cakes Right. And I would soak the fruit. I'd have all of these beautiful, beautiful fruits that were going to go into it. And I would soak them um, months before uh, right. before having to use them. So it, they were really, really delicious. And I was known for it within the family. So when we, after my fibromyalgia journey and Chris's MS journey and, and what we do is changing our diets, I no longer made those because they had sugar in them and all these sorts of things. So I didn't do it and we went plant-based. So my children one day said to me, mum, can you please make a whole food plant-based Christmas cake? And I thought to myself, sure, I can do that. And so I developed this cake recipe. It's in my book, Christmas. It's in my cookbook. So I developed that and it was so delicious. Oh, that's so awesome. Between December and January, I made five, about five of them. Right. And I reckon I ate four of them. <laughs> so by the end of January, yep. I couldn't get out of bed without terrible pain in my feet. Ah. And I'm thinking to myself, hang on a minute. This is my fibromyalgia symptoms. These are all my symptoms. I had aches and pains everywhere. I wasn't able to do anything. Every walk I went on was painful. It was like, whoa, hang on a minute. What's going on? What has brought this about? And first of all, I thought, oh, it's stress. Right. right? So I thought, oh, I must be stressed because stress is a, a trigger. A big triggers and big killers and silent yeah. killer so I thought to myself okay it must be that but I then had this wake-up call as I was downstairs and my kids were going is there any of that Christmas cake and I just suddenly went oh my goodness it's the Christmas cake it's all of the dried fruit mm -hmm. that's in that Christmas cake 
And there was a little bit of sugar, but nothing much, but all of those concentrated sugars within those dried fruits. Mm -hmm. And slowly mm -hmm. I'd eaten my way back into <laughs> fibromyalgia again, right? Yeah. So yeah. I've learned that you can eat yourself in, eat yourself out, eat yep. yourself back in. And I love that because I always take those experiences as learning, as you did, right? Is sometimes we know what we're supposed to do and we might fall off a little bit and then our body talks to us again. And then it's like, oh my goodness, I've done it to myself, but this time you figure it out a lot more quickly and you have the awareness of your body talking to you right away and you can actually then go, oh, so now I know what my limit is and I'm going to go back below that limit so that I don't have to have all of the symptoms. I work with clients on that four. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> three cakes, not four. Three cakes, not four. <laughs> no, but it's, and what, what this is what my kick program does is when you have that knowledge and that understanding, it's really easy to be able to go back and go exactly that, wake up the next day and go, what have I eaten yesterday that I shouldn't have? Mm -hmm. that's actually caused me to wake up feeling like this and my body is going hey hello well you know we don't eat that food hello right. no that's not good for you and you can sit back and go oh okay I hear you but at the same time I think it empowers people to go because in the lot of you you probably find this yourself when you're working with clients everyone's not perfect all the time right yep we work with an 80 20 rule and when you, yeah, exactly. But you go to that party and you eat that little thing that you don't, you, you look at it and you go, oh, I shouldn't eat this, but you eat it anyway. <laughs> and then the next day you wake up with a symptom. At least you have the understanding and knowledge to go, oh, that's because I had that bit of gluten yesterday or that's because I ate that sugar yesterday. Okay, no worries. I won't do that today. Exactly. Bring yourself back. So that's what the kit program is all about. And then transformation is just, it, it, there's a lot of psychology when I'm asking people to change. So the transformation is doing all of the, the life coaching psychology side of things. So that's what we yes. do. That's my kit program. And it's what Love Chris it. and I live by and it's what we live under and it's the food that we eat. And basically it's my, um, I put it together after, with all of my knowledge and what goes on with me and then all my knowledge with him. And, and that's sort of 18 years of research in it. So yeah, it's good. That's awesome. Good. I love all of that. And it's so in line with my work as well, which I was so happy to meet you and be able to have you on this podcast and share mm -hmm. you with my audience. So let's, um, let's go Start back to the story of Chris. Yes. Yeah, so you went back to school, you learned all about that. And then where did so you then we there? we then started a journey of mm -hmm. Chris's MS and how the what food impacts him and what mm -hmm. we should be doing with him and it wasn't just about cutting out sugar there was so much more to it right. and his journey has led me all over the world so I've I studied under a lot of the nutritional medicine doctors in America um, we went to started going to functional medicine doctors in Australia mm -hmm. um, but the thing about that was we ended up he ended up taking a lot of pharmaceutical supplements a mm -hmm. lot so at one stage he was on thirteen hundred dollars a month wow and i was at the stage going i think i need a new husband because he's sending me bankrupt <laughs> <laughs> i can't afford you anymore <laughs> um, so we were kind of like, there must be more to his story, which is when I found myself in America studying under some of the guys there to know what we were missing and what we were doing wrong and what else we could do. And it wasn't just about giving him replacing normal, uh, replacing Western medicine drugs into pharmaceutical supplements. We, we were doing something wrong there. So what we thought was, is that we'll clean up his diet again and we will then start uh, looking at maybe specific things for, for, uh, for MS mm -hmm. that we could implement. And then, which we were doing. So that brought his supplement list down quite considerably just to the very basics. And he started to really get better from using a different diet, the diet we now use in kit. And um, 
our son, but I was still giving him certain, you know, certain things that I wanted to do. To do. And then our son said to me, mum, why are you giving him uh, supplements that potentially are extracts and fillers and all of these sorts of things? Why aren't you looking at doing, giving him whole foods? Um, because, you know, if he's not getting it out of his diet and you want a supplement, what are you doing? I said, well, there's nothing on the market. There's no supplements out there that are just 100% whole food. And I don't even know if you could do that. So we sat down as a family and and Chris, Chris is also a medicinal nutritionist now. So I sent him back to uni eventually to study. His, <laughs> go and get your own degree. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. So go and get your own. So he's also doing it. So we sat down as a family and, um, and with our son and uh, we developed our supplements, which are nothing but 100% whole food. So we use those alongside, but they're all at a medicinal grade. So we right. use those alongside our food and how we eat. And then I use it alongside things that I can't do. Like um, I've tried to develop a whole food zinc, for right. instance, and I can't do that. You can't do it. You can't get it just out of doing whole foods. I can't get it at a therapeutic grade. Right. So we will. And just explain that for the audience, because you have said medicinal grade and therapeutic grade. So just explain that so people know what you mean. So uh, there is a lot of um, the daily requirements of a particular nutrient. Um, We've got lots of research around what a daily requirement is. So, for instance, if we use zinc, a daily requirement of zinc is about eight grams a day. Mm -hmm. However, a therapeutic dose is about 15 grams a day so in other words what i'm getting daily great i can get that out of food and and the and and a supplement that'll give me eight grams of zinc a day and that'll help my body to do the 300 different enzymatic processes that zinc's involved in right so great we can we can work with zinc's fantastic and the immune system and all of these things but say i start to get a really nasty cold or i pick up Um, I've got something going on with my body, it's not in its optimal state, Mm -hmm. then what we might do is decide to supplement zinc. And we need to do that at a therapeutic grade. That means we give you like a whole, we dump a whole lot into the system and we bring it back up again. So you feel better. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. So it's the difference between taking a supplement at a maintenance level for good health versus needing more because the body needs to heal correct and the the rda the recommended daily amount is generally quite low to help us not get scurvy and rickets and things like that and actually the maintenance dose very often is a little bit higher than even the rda amount but the therapeutic level is even higher is higher again so when we look at making our supplements we're always wanting them at that therapeutic level in other words to give the body a really good boost and what they need right um so we uh it we increase yeah so they're highly concentrated so that we what we do is we get the food uh we um dehydrate them and then they get turned into a powder and then we've mixed together, we've formulated these mixtures and then they've gone off to be tested to make sure that we can get them within this therapeutic grade. So if I'm looking for you know, certain nutrients within it that is going to help a particular condition, then that's what's in it. Does that make sense? And then um, we've tried to do that with zinc, but you can't, I can't do that. I can't, it would require people to be taking tablespoons and tablespoons and they're not going to do that. Right. So what we've done is then then use zinc, a really good quality zinc um, as a supplement or magnesium. I can't do it with magnesium either yet. I haven't been able to formulate that. So, uh, so those two things I might, might use as a, but it, therefore it brought down what we were doing um, to a much more manageable, both from a financial point of view and how many, you know, Chris didn't rattle when he walked because he was taking so many pills. <laughs> right, right. And it was all through whole foods. Right? All through whole foods, yeah. And then a few other additional supplements that you haven't been able to yeah. yet make as a whole food yeah. option. 
like so vitamin D. Chris or, doing today? Oh, he's growing great. He's great. He keeps, uh, he has, takes all of our supplements tw twice a day. Mm -hmm. And that's what stops him from, uh, from all of the fatigue. So one of his big um, problems with his MS is this overwhelming fatigue. So if he has our supplements on board, then the fatigue is, he can, he can, uh, he can sort of work normally during the day. Yeah. Right. So it's fantastic. Absolutely amazing. So the beetroot blend gives him uh, the research around ours. So we have three. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing uh, for those that can are watching. Uh, this is what they look like. For those that are listening, um, this is our Flourish uh, Daily Detox. It's a natural beetroot blend. So it's based around beetroot. And um, there's 10 beetroots in every tablespoon. So it's all been dehydrated. So you're getting this massive hit of all of those beautiful things and it, it's designed to drag fat out of the liver and but it also helps the body to uh, to increase its oxygen uptake mm -hmm. so we get so you get more oxygen around the body and therefore your uh, the time to exhaustion if you're uh, doing exercise actually is dropped down by about 16 percent. so it's really amazing so this every female i know loves this it's fantastic it's really good for liver that's awesome um, we've got a prebiotic and yep. we use a prebiotic, not a probiotic. And the reason we made a prebiotic was because we wanted to feed the gut microbiome their very best food because as human beings, we're only 66% the same um, We because everybody's gut microbiome is different. Yep. yep. So we needed to, I didn't want to start giving people uh, certain strains because how do I know that you need that particular strain? Very true. So, so instead of putting, you know, lactobacillus in or, you know, bifidobacterium, whatever it is, mm -hmm. we, we give you the food. Now, if you feed them properly, they are going to thrive and flourish the way they should do within your body. And yeah. I'm not trying to manipulate you. So, and I've seen that go wrong in too many people. So mm -hmm. hence why we did a, um, a prebiotic and this is uh, for the gut microbiome. And then our last one, which is our anti-inflammatory blend. So the anti-inflammatory blend is based all around turmeric, but keeping turmeric as a whole, not as curcumin, which is its extract, because you need the, uh, not just the curcuminoids that are in it, but you also need the tumorones in it to actually get it across, allow you to absorb it, because that's their role. Their role is to allow absorption of the curcumin. So it's without it, you're trying to, you know, you, you just keep putting heaps and heaps and heaps in, hoping that you're going to get something out of it. So that's, that's about the other end. Yeah, exactly. And we've got a fourth one coming. Um, it's it's uh, in testing at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it's testing really well, but we've got one little issue with it. So I've got to reformulate it to try and get it at, at exactly what we want. So it's going to be a greens one. And, uh, and I'm, I can't wait to get it on, but it's such a process trying to get all of this stuff done. But that's them. And then nothing but whole food. That's fabulous. And they're all, I'm guessing, all manufactured in Australia, but you ship yes. globally. Yes, we do ship globally as long as people are prepared to pay the, um, the shipping cost. Right. Uh, but yes, we can easily ship globally. And I've got it at, currently it goes to England and it goes to Switzerland and there's a few people in America that that want it so it's fantastic um the I would like to offer your anybody listening to this especially if they're in Australia anybody listening is is that they can use a code called welcome 10 and they'll get 10 percent off uh, when they put their order in so they can just use that whenever they want to so maybe that'll help, help with the the postage Thank you so much. That's very generous. And I will put that in the show notes. So welcome 10. Is that all caps? Yep. Welcome caps. 10. Welcome yep. 10. Awesome. So just um, before we wrap up and we'll come back and give everyone your contact information, I just want to wrap up with a couple of questions that I love to ask all of my guests. And I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to your story and how you got into this. And with so many people in the health and wellness field, it's always as a result of navigating your own health issues or family health issues and what beautiful things come out of it so I'm so glad that your husband suggested you go back to school and that your son was smart enough to say 
why don't you make it yourself if you can't find it, you know, from whole food, right? Yeah, so yeah. very smart boy there. But yeah. what does don't wait for your wake up call mean to you? Oh, wow. What does, uh, this is a very good question because everybody waits for their wake up call. So, um, and it's a terrible thing to do. Absolutely. If you wait, 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 and keep thinking tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll go tomorrow. Or, uh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm not, uh, even though your body is yelling and screaming at you to go and do something, but you just wait till you fall off the perch. Um, it's a hard road back, much harder road back. If you wait, much harder road back. And because along with, if you if you do wait and you do get that wake up call, a lot of the the stress that comes with that you then have to learn a whole new way of actually getting it of of being less stressed you've got to get rid of all the fear and if you go to western medicine they're going to tell you all of this stuff and put the fear of you know of your future and that just makes everything worse as opposed to if you take responsibility now and this is what i'm trying to kick uh, teach my children my children in their 20s and early 30s um, if I'm trying to teach them that hey listen food is such a it's a drug that you put into your body three times a day so do it properly listen to what your body's got to say do the exercise do the meditation get rid of your stress allow yourself to heal and allow yourself to be the very best you possibly can at, at all all stages right not yep. not just you know climbing the corporate ladder and not listening to the fact that you're tired or that your body's not uh, you know you, you're breaking out in acne or your periods are bad you know all of these sorts of things it's a matter of going hey all right I need to look after myself perfectly in amongst all of that find time to look after yourself in amongst all of that and make yourself number one priority then when you're doing that you're not going to get that wake up call right because it's a hard road back so don't do it <laughs> don't do it, it you, you know look after yourself first put yourself first that's what it means yes. to me put, I yourself like that. First. put yourself first yes because you're yeah. absolutely right it is a hard road back and it's a yeah. hard road back because of that stress that the body's under that you're under and a body in that chronic stress state can't heal so wow. yeah don't let it get to that listen when your body whispers right <laughs> exactly it's interesting because our son who's in the business with us he's um he he's in his 30s and he um he we were talking about our demographic right who's going to buy our products yes mm -hmm. and they usually people who've got chronic illness mm -hmm. will buy our products but it's so interesting watching him because we will often go to big functions all over australia mm -hmm. and to farmers markets and we sell it there mm -hmm. and those sorts of things and it's interesting watching him sell because uh, he'll see an athlete, you know, so obviously someone who's, you know, in their cycling gear or at, at, at his own age. And when he's talking to them, he says, you know, it's okay for mum and dad. They've got issues and therefore they take them because of that. The same with your mother or your father. He said, but you know what, what's really interesting is I use this for prevention. So mm -hmm. I don't end up like mum and dad. Yeah. He goes, because if I can keep my body without inflammation in it, then no, disease can't thrive in, in that body. If I keep my liver healthy, then I'm okay. If I keep my gut microbiome healthy, then I've, I've got this. So I use these products as prevention because he doesn't want that wake up call. I love that. He, full body goosebumps through me because that's a message that I'm really interested in getting out to the world that this can be done. Yeah. We don't have to just give up our power to the doctor. We are so empowered in our health. We just have to understand the steps that we can take. And we can start with baby steps, right? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Baby steps. And it's, uh, it's not hard to do, right? Exactly. I love that. So tell us how people can get hold of you. Oh, thank you. So if anyone's interested in getting hold of us, we can go to our website called Flourish Live Naturally. 
but the website is www.flourishlnliveNaturallyLN.com.au. So flourishln.com.au, you can pop onto our website and have a look and send me a, a message through that, an email, or send a send me an email to Kathy Kathy at flourishln.com.au. I'd be more than happy to um, chat to anybody who's got an issue or how our products could actually help you. Um, you, and also we have a Instagram page, which is flourish underscore live underscore naturally, and a Facebook page, which is just flourish live naturally. So you're Fabulous. welcome to join any of those. We would love to have you there and or on LinkedIn. So if anyone's in LinkedIn, um, Kathy Ashton for LinkedIn, and I put up there fairly regularly things like you know about 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 fruits and vegetables. And, and um, so we're on, on a Friday, I do a, a post about um, the health benefits of a particular vegetable, like zucchini. Did anybody know that zucchini um, contains omega-3s? So, you know, it's just little facts like that. So, so people can actually see the power of vegetables and because people think that they're just fruit and vegetables and they don't realise the power of them within our body and how our body thrives and loves them and how much our body needs them and how much they need them they need them they need them you know where you got for eye health tomatoes are good for eyes not just for hearts and right. not just for prostate and um, all of these sorts of exciting things broccoli oh my goodness the power of broccoli right I the power of broccoli, broccoli. yeah oh, awesome goodness. i love that i'll start i know we're friends on linkedin so i have to start checking that out and um, my last question for you is just what message would you like to leave the audience with now to inspire them to start taking action with those baby steps today, like right after listening to this podcast? Be plant strong. This is probably the biggest one. When you're looking at your plate, make sure that it's plant strong. So in other words, three quarters of that plate is from a plant source because or is full of vegetables and don't have the same vegetables every day. Be creative with your colours. Make sure that you are eating that rainbow plate and that at the end of the day, you can tick off every colour of the rainbow that you have eaten because then you are going to be providing your gut microbiome with that with really, really all of the nutrients that it needs. And a healthy gut microbiome means a healthy you. So, uh, yeah, be plant strong. So whatever that means to you, if you're 100% plant strong, great but make sure that you are eating at least 28 different fruits and vegetables every day. Make yourself a rainbow chart, stick it up on your fridge, make sure you can tick it all off. I have and a rainbow then, chart. So do you have a rainbow chart? Uh, not anymore, because at the end of the day, I pretty much know, I used to, right. and right. What, where I like to do it is with my grandchildren. Yes, it's great with kids. So I have one, great. so anybody listening, if they would like access to it, they can email me and I can share my rainbow chart. Because I totally yeah. agree with you 100% what you're saying. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here today, Kathy. I really appreciate your time and all of the wisdom that you've shared. And thank you to all of the listeners for joining us. And I hope you will join me again on next week's episode. <music>